Hello friends. Today I'm going to discuss a new technique of exploiting um, stack overflows uh, by using heaps. Um, in this case, basically, rather than executing your shell code on the stack, um, you actually move your shell code to a heap address in the memory and um, basically execute it from there. Now, why would you want to do something like that is the first question that you might be thinking. And the answer for that is address space layout randomization. Uh, basically, address space layout randomization or ASLR um, allows basically the operating system to change the, the executable memory address where a specific executable and a DLL is loaded in the memory every time um, the application loads in the system. This makes it difficult for an attacker, or in this case, the white hat ethical hacker, to actually exploit a buffer overflow because now he or she does not have the right address in memory where um, you know the attacker shell code can reside, and the attacker can basically um, you know point to that specific shell code in the memory um, as the address keeps on changing with every um, with every um, um, load of the application in the memory. So um, one of the techniques that allows you to bypass an address space layout randomization is basically heap spray. Um, heap spray can be usually um, accomplished uh, by basically spraying the large parts of heap memory with uh, a shell code and your no op instructions. Um, that way what ends up happening is that when you jump to any part of the heap, uh, if most of the heap has been sprayed with your no ops and shell code, uh, there's a good probability that you will be jumping to one of the addresses that points to a knob and since that specific uh, you know address is going to be filled up with a knob followed by your shell code you will end up executing your shell code so the idea is that uh, it's sort of a brute force technique for against the address based layout randomization where um, if i don't know where the address is going to be for a specific shell code i'm going to spray the entire memory with my shell code and no of instructions so that uh, irrespective of where i jump i can still execute my shell code uh, usually what we try to do is jump to higher memory addresses um, so uh, or, or lower memory addresses so in this case jumping to a lower memory address allows you to sort of uh, make ensure that you're jumping correctly uh, into your knobs uh, so I'm going to show that with the help of an example of uh, an, uh, an ActiveX DLL that is installed uh, in uh, in Internet Explorer um, it's called Faith FTP, and basically, Faith FTP suffers from a buffer overflow exploit, where after 1322 instructions uh, in a specific uh, function, you can overflow uh, the instruction pointer. Now, rather than in this case, I'm still exploiting it on an XP system, so there is no ASLR. But this is sort of an example of how you would exploit the same thing on a Windows 7 or any other machine, you know, operating system that provides ASLR. Windows, by the way, started providing ASLR support from uh, Windows Vista, uh, and it's getting better every time. However, HeapSpray still can be used to bypass ASLR. There are other techniques to bypass ASLR, where basically you can find a DLL that has not been compiled in the application set uh, where, um, using the ASLR flag, and you can basically use addresses from that specific instruction set uh, or that DLL to execute. Um, to execute your shell code by getting a proper address. However, in this case, uh, I will be using HeapSpray on Internet Explorer 7. Um, and HeapSpray can be usually used in uh, uh, in uh, programming languages that support um, just-in-time compiling or just-in-time running. Basically, uh, if JIT compilers are present, usually in JavaScript or VBScript or uh, PDFs, where you are allowed to use JavaScript or VBScript, where they do compile um, the instruction sets in memory during the runtime. And as a result, it's possible for you to spray large parts of the memory uh, as I have defined with your shell code and your no op instructions, and then jump to that specific instruction. So in this case, um, we are able to exploit the system after uh, providing 1322 instructions or 1322 uh, character sets and then control in this case this is supposed to be an SCH overflow exception uh, for SCH overflow demo you can look at my SCH overflow demo uh, uh, WMV file 
however as i pointed in this case um, i am pointing to a high memory address which is 050505 i'm basically you know using this address because this address has been found to be much more stable on most of the ie7 uh, you know instructions or ie7 uh, applications on xp and, um, and and i guess on windows 7 as well uh, what i'm trying to do is if you can look at the specific memory what i'm trying to do is uh, basically control create uh, a chunk of uh, a 10,000 size, fill it up with uh, my shell code, which basically opens up a calculator, and then basically uh, follow that chunk with my no op instructions, uh, and then you know basically use that big chunk and spray that chunk all across the memory. If you look over here, what I'm trying to do is I'm just looping a for counter, and I'm basically using 300 of these 10,000 byte chunks. Uh, to be sprayed into the heap. Once the heap spray is done, uh, you know, I'm basically triggering the exploit by uh, basically calling 1322 ease followed by uh, the address of uh, my specific exploit. All right, so let's see this in action. I'm gonna open up the Internet Explorer application. Let it run. And now I'm going to just drag and drop the specific location. Um, this is an ActiveX, so I always does ask this exception. I'm going to let the exception pass on the ActiveX. Um, as you can see, the user does have to wait for a few seconds, but basically, after a few seconds, um, yeah, the heap should be sprayed uh, with the, the memory, uh, uh, with the chunks that I was talking about earlier. All right, as we can see, the spray has been done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to um, go to that address in memory so that I can show you. Um, seems like I'm having a little bit of a problem with my stack. Um, I'm going to shut down the system. There we go, it's back again. Um, basically, ActiveX keeps on asking these stupid exceptions that it needs to pass. Um, if you look at this right now, um, the program, is, the Internet Explorer is on a hold. Let's look at the SEH chain. And as you can see on this specific address, this is the SEH chain. I have been able to override with 0505050505. Now, um, I'm going to first go to the structure exception handler and look at that specific address. Uh, Basically, the address was. Let's look at it again. 0228F9BC. All right, so let's go over there. Let's see, as you can see, that the SE handle has been overwritten with the address that we had pointed. Now, let's try to um, go to that specific address. I'm going to try to find uh, the address in memory. Let's see. Follow in down. There you go. As you can see, that this is the heap memory, and the heap memory has been overwritten with all my exceptions. In this case, and the no op instructions, followed by my shell code. And if you look again, again it's followed by, uh, you know, I'm gonna actually expand this for you all to see in case if you're not able to see that. Uh, and then you can see that the memory has been written with shell code, shell code, shell, uh, the no ops, and then again the shell code. So I'm going to go again to that address just to be a bit sure that we are looking at the right stack. Follow uh, and dump again. As you can see, the are pointing to the shell code over here by having the no ops first and then the shell code actually uh, and that's what basically you're trying to overwrite with the point to memory address that points to you know no op instructions followed by your shell code so 
once that has been established what I'm going to do is let the exception pass and there we go we have a calculator popped up um, and Internet Explorer is dead at this point of time but that's the whole idea that you can ex execute any um, any uh, shellcode that you would like at this point of time so that's a quick example of how to exploit heap over space um, just again to make sure that this works try again let the heap get sprayed without the debugger and wait for your calculator to be popping up and there it is the calculator has popped up that means your shell has been executed using heap spray that's it for today thank you